Hi, it's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Cyberlink Power Director Ultimate. And here we are in part six of our eight-part basic training with Cyberlink Power Director. One of those powerful features in Power Director, in fact, it's an essential feature in virtually every video editor or any special effects making tool, is something called keyframing. Keyframing can be used to create animations to vary settings of an effect that vary over time or even to vary audio levels. So here on my timeline, for instance, I have a clip on my timeline in which some special effects have been added. If I open up the keyframe panel, you can see that I've taken those special effects and I've set them to vary over time. So if you look over there on the right, you can see that I have the effect keyframe so that the number of grids changes over the course of the video. We have a title down here. If I double click on the title and open it up in the picture in picture designer, you notice that I have created keyframes so that the title moves across the screen. So I created an animation with it. And down at the bottom, a very important aspect of keyframing, I have music playing in the background and I have narration popping in. And whenever the narration pops in, I have keyframes set up to lower the volume of the music in the background so that the narration can be heard. And then after the narration's over, the music comes back up again. Keyframes usually show up as little dots, more often as little diamonds. And the easiest way to demonstrate how keyframes work is by applying keyframes to a still photo. So here on my timeline at the very end, I've got a still photo of my mom and dad on their wedding day. And with that clip selected, if I go up here to the function button at the top of the timeline, I can select the option to pan and zoom. By the way, pan and zoom is only available for still photos. If you select a video, in order to do a pan and zoom over a video, you'll have to use a power tool called crop zoom pan. But we're working with the still photo, so if I select from the tools, pan and zoom, you notice that it opens a library of preset pans and zooms. It's great if you're creating a slideshow, you can just sort of randomly apply pans. There's even a random one here, so that you can apply a different pan and zoom to each photo on your timeline. Or we can create a custom pan and zoom, our own little Ken Burns effect, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to select user defined, and that opens up the magic motion designer. If you look down here on the timeline below the photo, you'll see that a keyframe appears by default. That's that little diamond that's red when it's activated. It's activated when the playhead is over it. And by creating keyframes, I can create a motion path or an animation over this picture. So I'd like to begin with a close up of the couple. And so with the playhead on top of that keyframe, I can grab the corner handles here of my view control and zoom in and by dragging on the center, set it so that I start out with a close-up of the bride and groom's faces. And if you look over here in the preview window to the right, you can see this is my starting keyframe point. Now I'm going to create a second keyframe by moving the playhead here to the end of that little timeline, to the end of my clip. And now I'm going to create another keyframe by clicking on the Add Keyframe button here along the bottom of the timeline. Once we add another diamond shaped keyframe to our timeline and our playhead is on top of it, we can resize this view so that we are seeing the entire picture. And I can do that manually, trying to line it up myself, or I can just go over here and change position to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that will put me right center in the picture. And then scale, we'll just set that to 100% or just change these to one. And there's my end point for my animation. So as you can see, we just simply have two keyframe points representing the settings for position and scale, rotation if we'd like to add that also. And then the program will create the animation between those two. So I'm just gonna click OK, go back out to the timeline here. And then in the preview window, I'm going to click the play button so we can see our animation. And there we go. So as I say, there are many applications for keyframing throughout the program. Once you learn to see them, you'll find them everywhere. You can do some really high level stuff with keyframing. It's the key to virtually any special effect. All right, in part seven, we're gonna come back and show you how to add titles to our movie. And then we'll continue to wrap things up here in our eight part basic training for CyberLink PowerDirector.